All right, we're going to work it out right now. Brothers and sisters, we're joined together today to believe in the power of metal. Metal Church. I've been working metal for about 20 years, but there's always more to learn. Steve Davis is a master craftsman, one of the top five in the world, where I'm just a master of getting it done fast. You can just see the way he handles his tools that he really cares about what he does. I went to Steve's shop to get some pointers on finishing off this gas tank. What I was going to ask you, I usually cut these things in half. Mm -hmm. and then finish both sides perfectly symmetrical, then weld it back together. Oh. To me, that's easier than trying to oh, absolutely. hammer and dolly it all out. Yeah, sooner or later you get where you can't get inside of there anymore. Yeah. Or especially you can't get it into the tools. We could lose the quarter of an inch from a, yeah. a pair of electric shears. Yeah, yeah. just okay. marking it is the key. You yeah. Know, where's the middle? Yeah, that's so. always a good one. So we want to measure this thing. Yeah, get a, a rough center and then usually I the tape deal usually works as good as anything for it. So we're at let's see where we were here. So this is the first one I've I broke that bottom edge and then shrunk it around. Yeah, welding on sharp corners is always always a problem because you get those pieces and if it moves this way a little bit or moves that way a little bit, you end up with such a you know a waffled up piece. The tanks, especially the aluminum ones, I'll make the skins out of like 60 or something like that. And then I'll make the, the bottom part or whatever the panels are, if it sits low, notch for the, the rockers and that, and make the tunnel out of eighth inch and try to hook the mounts off the eighth and let that 80 be here. And it gives you just a little more strength where it's strong in the taco part or the tunnel and it comes where up. Where it's supporting the gas. And then rather than try to put some big old mounts on the thing on a thin deal that you know for sure if you ride the bike is going to crack. So you sure you want to cut it in half? Yeah. Okay. This is why you needed that extra width added to your design, because when you cut the tank, you'll lose some material. I'm a little scared of that weld right there. We, we probably should have planished that down before we got started, but. That went right through it. Okay, that was cool. Steve Davis just cut my tank in half. I want you to take off some of the outside. Once the tank is cut, you can get inside and sand down the welds. Now, knock the insides and we'll go over to the. I got it pretty, pretty yeah, yeah. close. So. You're way ahead of me, man. Give it a quick pass through the gizmo here, see what it has to say. After sanding the welds, we run it through the planishing hammer to smooth them even more. What's your mix? Half transmission fluid, half paint thinner. And it's it's just enough to lubricate it and uh, let, let it slide through there, because especially in the power hammer. Get it out to a bare metal section where it doesn't have any oil on it. It goes tink, 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 tink. <laughs> 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 yeah. just the kerosene deal 
just sounds like the worst thing in the world. It's, you know, you'd have diesel fuel, and you know, all, everything in the world would be smelling like it. That's what I use. My house stinks when I go home at night. My oh, shoes yeah. stink. And yeah, even transmission fluid smells like, thinner isn't very good. Smells like I just went camping. Here's where we need our hearing protection. Steve works the planishing hammer to smooth the welds. I stretch both pieces from the inside with the stretching hammer to make them symmetrical. I like my side, it's good already. It's a lot better. Just, you know, mash that through there. This thing. Yeah. Yeah, we can push them down. They'll probably go back together. Didn't have too much shape to it. Yeah. That's pretty good. Not bad, huh? To take away the waviness that the shears made, we scribe a cut line and trim the edges before welding the two pieces back together. Pretty damn close, I'll bet. I'm going to do that. I don't know if I'd want to sit in it, but you know, you're good at that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Okay. This looks like a good opportunity to hurt yourself every time I do this. This is nice, making a gas tank like this. Just let Steve do the whole thing. <laughs> Having two sets of hands while tacking is way better than one. Yeah, taking all the time in the world to get the, the fit and all the tacks in there is definitely, it saves you so much down the road. It's pretty amazing for me to sit back and watch someone as great as Steve just weld. I could watch it all day. Let's run that thing through the hammer adab and uh, stick it together. Thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spending the day at Steve's shop made me realize what an impatient fabricator I am. He makes it look so easy while being a true perfectionist.